This is from question set two, and uh, this gives you some information for cap M. Um, I'm sorry, this is question set one from question set two. It's kind of confusing. Um, but you have two stocks and some information about the risk free rate. So if cap M is true, then what is the equity beta for stock A? So there's equity beta, there's um, debt beta, there's all kinds of different betas that you could potentially calculate for a company. Here we have a bunch of information about the equity. Stock A has an expected return of 8%. Um, and then we have information that relates to sort of the market, um, which is exactly part of cap M. So let's just solve this. Let me start a new page. Okay, so for those who don't remember, CAPM is a theoretical model. It is not something that holds very well in the real world, but we use it a lot because it's a very helpful um, theory to help us explain what's happening in financial markets, even though it's not perfect. And the CAPM uh, equation is pretty simple. The return on asset, and let's just call it A, equals, and pretend that when you see an underscore like that, that it's a subscript. The risk-free rate plus the beta for A times the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Let me make that a little bigger. Another way to write this market risk premium. The return on the market minus the risk-free rate is the market risk premium. And uh, somebody asked me a question like, what's the intuition? Why does this, why do we have this equation? Um, and my answer is, if you think about, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. Like I remember when I first did asset pricing, I thought we would be talking about like, hey, you know, how's Walmart going to do this year? They've done really well at supplying their warehouses and, you know, we know they have new orders from China or whatever. Um, but asset pricing is not really about that, at least in this type of environment. It's more about like, if you think about the risk-free rate, the risk-free rate is kind of our free lunch. And that is like, if we just wanted to park money somewhere and not think about it, that's the rate of return we would get. This beta is a measure of how much the stock responds to what's happening in the market. So a high beta tells us that the, the stock is like super responsive to the market. This last term is sort of what we could get in addition or over and above the free lunch rate. So the return on the market minus the risk free rate is sort of a measure of um, how awesome investing in the stock market could be. And when we multiply that times the stock's beta, we get a real idea of how the stock moves with the market. So the beta is the covariance uh, adjusted, uh, how would I say it in intuitive terms? The beta is a measure of how responsive the stock is to changes in the market. So a high beta on asset A means that um, the stock responds really well to changes in the market. A low beta means that it um, doesn't respond very well. Okay, so let's do this. Stock A has an expected return of 8%, the risk-free rate is 2%, and the market portfolio is 9%. Compute the equity beta. Okay, if you were doing this by hand, let me just write this down. Um, return on the market is 9%. The risk-free rate is 2%. Well, let's do, let's make it like that. Um, the return on A is 8%. Now, if you were doing this by hand, you could do 8% equals 2% plus beta A times 8% minus 2%. And you could solve for it. You can do it with algebra. Uh, here's another way to do it without having to worry. Let's make up a beta. Let's call it 1.2. And use the cap M. So cap M says it's going to be risk free rate plus the beta times the market return minus the risk free rate. And then if we goal seek beta, what if goal seek? If we set this to 0 
oops, I'm sorry. 0.08, no, 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 I did it wrong again. There we go, C14 to 0.08 by changing the beta cell, we get 0.85 I don't know why Excel is very upset with me right now. Anyway, we get 0.85, and if you, I believe, look here, I get it. That is the solution that Professor Hall provides. So 0.85 is the answer. We could do it algebra, or we could do it using goal seek. It doesn't really matter. But in either case, uh, that's the solution.